to, to Servan. Uh, Servan is working at, uh, at Womanity, an organization that empowers girls and women developing kids. And for the last three mm -hmm. years, organizing um, the Womanity Award. This year, the award will be yeah. given to organizations uh, that use information and communication technologies to fight women, mm -hmm. to fight violence yeah. against women. Um, we also have with that the finalist of this award. We have uh, Professor Anne Demol from the Emergent Media Center of the Champlain College. We have Lulu Barrera from Luchadoras uh, in Mexico. Alexandra Hatch, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce any of those names, uh, from the Tactic Tech Tactical Tech Collective in Germany, and Dr. Nancy Glass from the John Hopkins University. And maybe before we actually go on and talk about all those amaz amazing projects, Seven, you can tell us a bit more about the award? Yes, um, the, the maybe a background behind this award was, uh, you probably know when you're in this call, you probably know about the topic, but just for to refresh our memory, you know that one in every four women will experience domestic violence. Uh, in their lifetime, um, women age, uh, age 15 to 44 across all cultures are more at risk of, of rape and other acts of violence than cancer, malaria, uh, car accidents, or even war, according to a study by the World Bank. Um, we know that one of the root causes of violence is gender inequality and, and, and all these unequal power relationships. But we also know, um, due to recent Australian research, that nearly half of all women report experience abuse of harassment online and it goes up to 76 percent of those who are under 30 year old so it's quite a difficult state uh, of, of affairs uh, in the world and we really need to do something uh, so the humanity foundation created the award uh, in, uh, in 2013 with the idea to prevent violence against women so it's a difficult exercise how do you prevent how do you, how do you um, prevent acts of violence um, online, offline, uh, working with women but also men. So this, this award supports collaboration and replication of evidence-based programs uh, between organizations. This is not just a startup thing, it's, uh, it's really working with what works and ensure that it is replicated and, and, and um, um, translated in a, no, in a new place, in a new setting. Um, so um, uh, the fine is that you will see to now uh, three of them have developed a successful approach and that they will adapt and deliver uh, with a new partner. So Lulu, for instance, represents a new partner of one of the programs that she'll tell more about, about these in a minute. And um, so we're very proud to, to work with ICT-based ventures for this new award. And so what exactly did you pick that theme and what do you think ICT can bring to this topic? Um, well, the, the thing with ICT, it's, it's an ambivalent thing, uh, uh, as you all know, because first of all, we are reusing these platforms and uh, we know that ICT has created uh, tremendous opportunities, um, uh, n not only for, for women's empowerment, but also for their safety and, and also to address violence against women, but has also put women at further risk of technology-related violence. So people who perpetrate violence do very well know how to use this thing things to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, you know, to uh, make their life impossible. Um, it's it's the, the fact that we re, um, use ICT to end gender-based violence uh, with this award is a way to acknowledge that increasing role and place in society. And, uh, and it's also a way to take advantage of, of, of their technical and scalable nature you know, of all these innovations. And, um, and we'll see what, where we can go from there. And we'll see how these programs can be replicated elsewhere for other use. This is very interesting. Great. So maybe now uh, it's time to hear from all those projects actually using ICT to, to fight against uh, uh, violence against women. Um, so who wants to start? To start? Lulu? Sure. <laughs> Good morning. Hi. Uh, so I guess um, I, I will respond now to say in five, five sentences what our project is about. 
Great. Well, uh, here in Take Back the Tech and Luchadora San La Sandia Digital, um, we are partnering in, with the objective to help women and girls to realize the potential they have to shape the web. Um, along um, Take Back the Tech uh, research as a global campaign launched in 2006, they have uh, gathered information how women and girls don't doesn't have the same um, understanding that they don't understand how they actually have the potential to to have a strong voice that shape the web in order to counter violence against women online but also offline so we want to build a network of of women in mexico women activists and feminists that can actually challenge norms that are misogynistic or that perpetuate violence against women by having a strong voice on the web and mainly through storytelling. So we are planning a series of workshops on storytelling in order for women to have um, a great um, a great voice on the web that can actually counter uh, misogynistic views that are still prevail there. So we will also um, through this through this project, we will also encourage uh, to build awareness against violence against women that is happening online. And we, we will make some campaigns in order to to facilitate understanding, first to recognize that online, online violence against women is part of a continuum of violence that happens, happens offline as well. And um, we want to, to amplify collective power by doing networking with activists, artists uh, that can also take call uh, to raise awareness against violence against, against women. And finally, uh, we want to strengthen response um, against violence against women by doing some workshops that can uh, amplify um, capacities of women to respond against such violence. But in, in this last bit of our project, we are we are seeing how can we strengthen the links between online violence and offline violence so our workshops on um, digital self-defense as we are calling it um, they will have components of um, physical self-defense on the streets and uh, also online online self-defense and we want to move from um, finally, to, to, to end my, my contribution here, we want to move far from the protection, protectionist narratives that say that women need to be protected, need to, because we have seen how, uh, in order to react against online violence, most of the responses tend to say, um, you should not do this, you should not do that, and reinforce a framework of restrictions uh, upon women, and we want to do exactly the contrary. We want to have a perspective of self-defense in order to say you can do anything you want, just do it uh, with all the tools uh, that we allow you to do it safe, safer. So we want to enable women to do things instead of restricting. Thank you, Lulu. And m maybe before we move on to, to Nancy, could you just explain what exactly you mean by self online self defense? Sure, it's um, it's the consciousness of uh, exploring the web and carrying on your own, carrying on any activity you like to do um, in in a safety in a secure framework, but without fear, <laughs> because. Sometimes I, at the workshops we have had on, on digital security, we at the end, uh, because we don't have a consciousness of, of the risks on, online, we can face, face online, we end up having, um, yeah, we, we end up having, having fear and you remain yourself disempowered you know you feel you can't do anything so um we have we as women haven't been told we are able to protect ourselves and we can react 
and we can be sure going on the streets, for example, and being certain that whenever you can face um, harassment, you can actually react and protect yourself. So it basically is a change of mindset, saying you have the power to protect yourself and Great. do it well. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Lulu. Uh, Nancy, do you want to tell us a bit more about uh, what you're doing exactly? Sure. Um, we are, we've developed an application, an app. We call it My Plan. And it's focused on helping women or supporting women who are making complex decisions about their safety, the safety of their children, and their family in abusive relationships. So the app allows women to um, consider their risk in the relationship, how dangerous the relationship is. It also allows them to consider their priorities for safety. For example, having resources or um, their, their privacy, uh, their dignity, their children's safety, their own safety. And then it, allow, it provides, um, based on their input, it provides a tailored safety plan personalized to their own situation to help them uh, make decisions on how to safely um, end the relationship, but for many women, um, how to safely stay in the relationship. And so we're partnering with our colleagues, CHISP, which is an Italian NGO, in Somalia, which um, is certainly a very complex setting um, where women often don't have access to resources um, traditional in Western countries like shelters or hotlines. So this is a resource that we're applying in the healthcare setting where most women do seek services and can seek them safely on their own to help the healthcare providers and the women partner to develop a plan for their safety. Great, thank you. Um, and what about you, Alex? Still not working. <laughs> uh, I think Alex, maybe you should go into and, and, and look what's not working. Do we have Anne in the meantime? Hello, Anne? I can see I can see that Anne is on, but um, she's not activating. Oh, here she is. Yeah. She's typing now. If someone can can maybe invite her as a speaker, it would be. Um, I have no idea to do that. Um, Alex, in the meantime, do you want to maybe try uh, a new headset or check that your mic is not muted and activated? Of all of us, of all of us, Alex is a very, very tech savvy person. <laughs> uh, don't quite know how to do this. Um, if if uh, any of the admin maybe can uh, activate the speaking function. I will try to pull out the um, project of the finalist in the meantime. OK. Um, so maybe we can, while we wait for Alex and, and Anne, maybe we can start talking a bit about, um, about what we're here to talk about. <laughs> um, So maybe the first question is, how do you know that all of your programs have an impact? How do you quantify and measure it? No. So anybody from, wants to um, so answer that question? <laughs> Hi, this is Nancy. Um, I'm a researcher, and, and so I um, spend a lot of time thinking about how to demonstrate the impact of our work. And so what we've done, we originally started developing this uh, resource in 2003. 
and as technology has advanced, so have we. Um, and however, we have tested it with um, in the United States with over 700 women and looked at uh, how the uh, how using the those uh, my plan and the safety decision aid has um, reduced their decisional conflict, so they feel more confident in the conflict in the decisions they're making. It's helped them to access safety behavior, safety strategies that they feel that are more helpful. Um, and we've also looked at women who have decided to end the relationship. Uh, they have been able to end the relationship safely. And we've done this. <laughs> to women who on the internet like great uh, any other feedback on that topic Oh, Nancy, just that um, there is a quite um, bad sound when you talk. Maybe if you can be able to mute and you can see what you last said. Um. Okay. Um, I think the bad noise is coming from Anne. So Anne, you can just put your headset on. Okay. Um, moving on to the next question, I guess. Um, you're all working in very different. Uh, fields when it comes to, to new technologies. Uh, some are working with, with apps. Others are working with completely different aspects, mostly doing workshops. And, and do you see any, any big trends uh, in the way ICT could help violence against, against women? Can you listen to me? Lulu, we can't, we can't hear you. Yes, now it's good. OK, <laughs> great. Um, I wanted to partially also respond to the previous question, so I'll try to do it really quickly. Um, and I'm actually the, the scale of partner. Uh, uh, we will be in Mexico replicating Back the Tech. But APC, which is uh, the organization that created Take Back the Tech in 2006, has found that in, in questions uh, in surveys done to their to their partners to their local partners because i have to say that take back the tech is um it's a campaign that has been replicated in more than 30 countries over the course of the years and they have uh, approached their local partners in order to know how how the campaign has helped them uh, on the local context and they have found out that 70 per 74 percent of their partners um, have been able to respond better to online violence against women threats they have faced. And in Mexico, um, in that way I will connect to your later question, uh, we have been experiencing, experiencing over the last year uh, a tremendous rise of violence against women online, especially towards women femi feminist activists, which are young and um, they they are part of um, of collectives which remain uh, on in institutional institutional institutionalized. I will say um, they are not part of formal NGOs, but rather they are collective of women, very young, with very progressive voices and a, a strong feminist discourse. That because of of their discourse challenge norms, uh, they've been targeted. 
of on online violence. And that online violence, it's, it's how to say, it's touching the, the security on, on their own, on their lives offline as well. So there is a, there is a trend on violence against women we are seeing, but also the last couple of weeks, we saw how uh, public concern was raised very effectively through social networks, digital media, because of women there to denounce what was happening to them. So there were, were a couple of cases, around five or six cases over the course of the last month, in which women were strong and able to use technologies to speak against the violence they were experiencing. And the result was uh, also a, a massive amount of trolling happened against them, but also massive support of other women happened. So there was a massive protest um, of around more than 7,000 people happening last weekend. And all the media were talking about this. And there, we were, the message uh, right there was online violence is a form of violence. It's not being recognized as such. The state and, and authorities and institutions are not prepared to react against it, to protect, uh, yeah, to, to react against it and sanction what's happening. But women having strong voices are being able to counter that speech. So I think um, there is a trend we are seeing after the protest. We are seeing how more women are speaking about and disclosing what's happening to them through social networks too, uh, showing what the aggressions are like and having a response a more sensitive, um, a, a more sensitive response against the, the action against this type of violence and also solidarity networks have been enabled. So um, just to finalize, um, yeah, having a strong storytelling uh, besides, uh, um, um, yeah, be behind this, having a strong women's voices speaking against violence, it actually can have a multiplying effect from a point of view. Mm -hmm. And Alex, can you talk? Now? Hello? Is it working? Yeah, hello, this is Anne. Can you hear me? Yes, we have Anne. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it takes a, takes a technological woman to take the longest turn time to figure it all out. But anyway, um, so I'd like to talk about um, Quick Breakaway. Uh, Breakaway program that works with youth. So it is a preventative, and we're working with youth at a pivotal age in their social development. So it's the preteen and early teen stages when they're making social decisions. And the technology is one that appeals to youth. It's video games. So um, it was originally designed for boys um, to change their behavior. And then uh, that was through um, working with the gender specialist at the UNFPA and our partner Population Media Center. The, uh, the catch for the boys is that it's a soccer game. It's a soccer video game with a narrative. And um, we then developed a youth camp model that is co-ed. And what we found through research is that it actually does move boys along a continuum to becoming advocates for um, ending gender-based violence and that also with the girls, it empowered them much like our other speakers are talking about giving girls a voice um, that uh, we found that through research of the camps in, that we hosted in El Salvador and in Palestine. And um, for the Romani, we're really excited because our partner is um, Grassroots soccer, which has impacted about one, I think it's a, it can't be. It's it's an amazing amount of youth throughout Africa. And uh, we're working to integrate our programs together. So soccer is a message, 
and it's the vehicle for messaging and a video game that really runs you through um, how do you confront violence against women and girls. Right, so we have... Sorry, 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 Okay, you hear can be? Yeah. Nobody was talking. <laughs> so we are here with Dalia that is uh, also coordinating the gender and tech program uh, in the practical tech. I'm just gonna take three minutes to the, the gender technology program. Is that good? Should we do it now or yeah? See? Okay. So the Gender and Technology Institute uh, seeks to prevent violence against women by uh, increasing their understanding about privacy and digital security and to develop their own mitigation strategy and develop uh, actions that are localized to their own context and needs. This is basically the, the most important elements, but the second part is that the development of women to be able to transfer the new knowledge into their own organizations, communities and networks. Right now, for the Humanity Award, we are trying to replicate the program that has been running for the last 17 months in the context of Central America plus Mexico. And we are partnering with uh, Justice Associates. Uh, so the idea is to, we have been right now in Nicaragua some months ago with a meeting with different uh, women from different social movements tackling different risks and challenges and that have their own uh, social mediation strategies to assess what were the needs and the risks they were taking and to understand better how we can implement the training and the program and the role of activities in the context of some and countries. So I'm going to start with the micro, then maybe I can give you another questions. <laughs> You all seem to work mostly with women in developing countries, which is obviously the, the theme, but uh, what is there a population specific, specifically that you can help ICT? And I'm mostly thinking about women who don't have access to, to the internet, for example, in, um, in, in uh, sub-Saharan Africa or, or spaces like that. Who do you think your projects are helping the most? Maybe Nancy has something to so say this about is that. Well, I will go then. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so in our case, we work especially with women that are like nurses and women mm -hmm. activists. But we understand that the kind of methodologies and the kind of uh, trainings, the result outputs, the materials for learning on those topics are useful for any woman that is interested in creating, you know, their own uh, safe space when they're using technologies. So it's about, you know, increasing the awareness of the, the critical and active use of technologies so they can, you know, protect the freedom of expression and opinion, but also be able, you know, to reach out the publics and the communities they want to work with and not be bothered by online harassment, you know, and other kinds of tech-related attacks. So, yes, we think that our target group is uh, women activists and women rights defenders, but the outcomes are useful for any woman that is interested in using technologies. Want to say something? That's, yeah, I think you pretty much covered it. I mean, especially particularly that region that we're trying to focus uh, on, there are a number of attacks that happen towards environmental activists, LGBT, uh, pro-choice activists. So I think taking sort of the gender perspective of, of the materials that we're working on and, and creating something that can be all-encompassing would be fantastic and, and covers basically women who work in different fields. Um, for for um, our project, um, the My Plan app, um, um, we've been we've been working for years to um, 
to partner in conflict or post-conflict settings with refugee and host communities. Um, and interestingly, I work in the Democratic Republic of Congo quite a bit, and my internet seems to be better there than in Baltimore in the United States. So um, I think the assumption that the, that um, our, or that internet is not um, is not a growing accessible smartphone, cell phone, very accessible in many of the locations we're working, and how we're partnering to reach women who are in in refugee settings or in camps or displaced, um, as well as host communities, is partnering with healthcare providers. Uh, women often are seeking health care, especially during their um, uh, childbearing years, um, as well as um, taking their children to health care settings. And this is often a time that they can go without their partner, their abusive partner, or other family members, and they can feel safe to talk with health care providers. It's a very important partnership, and in most settings where we work, there's clinics um, with skilled staff that we can train up if um, they need additional training, and our partner in Somalia, CHISP, has been there for 30 years and has a well-established program. So we're partnering with people who know how to provide good care, uh, know the importance of safety, and then empower and then empowering women to uh, to use these strategies um, and understand that what they're doing is often um, uh, really they're already doing a lot of safety behaviors and just reinforcing um, the importance of their their safety. So this is Anne. I wanted to just um, also point out that Breakaway isn't just in um, in Hebron or El Salvador or planned for South Africa. That we actually have a program in uh, the U.S. in Vermont. I mean, it's a program that uh, crosses economic boundaries, and we're in the middle of a translation for Mandarin as well, which also is a very important market. Um, what is nice about the youth camp model for us is that um, we can bring in the technology for and train the youth, uh, the facilitators, the coaches on the technology, that they can then um, use it in its a community-led program, so it reaches outside of, you know, on the ground and not just in the internet. Um, we really want to um, take it to a mobile platform. Um, take South Africa, for instance, their rates of adoption of mobile is equal to the U.S. It's 89 percent of the population. So um, in those kind of countries, what we see has happened is a leapfrogging. You know, they didn't have traditional telephones, they didn't have the computer systems, but um, mobile is all over the place and we feel like that's the best way to reach um, the broadest audience. In your case, uh, I also like to to respond, maybe and maybe follow. I'm yeah. yeah, maybe I'm crossing the boundaries to the, to your next question. And this is because um, our our replication um, proposal, it's as I was telling you, wants to wants that women and girls have a um, a conception that they can own technology and shape the way the web uh, through content create creation and mm -hmm. we have seen how um, they are they are not currently aware of their potential because there are a lot of myths around technologies as as if technologies were really sophisticated uh, in order to produce a story to be out there in the web you really need a, a high level technology or a high level capacity uh, capacities around around that and we want uh, to work with young women in order to make them realize that the technologies they currently have, as as the other the other participants were just were just telling, uh, cell phones, for example, make a perfect technology for them to to um, to produce a story, to influence uh, the community through a piece of communication. So um, yeah, I think. Uh, we 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 want to help them to overcome those myths of technology being really far away from from the reach and really far away for, to help them to influence the community that they belong to. So uh, 
yeah um that that will be for my part <laughs> Great. So this, I guess, was one of the first myths that most people have about women in tech in developing countries. Are there other myths that are obviously not not true? Um, um, can we say something about this? Uh, in our project, there's two myths that will work very strongly in the breaking. The first myth is that the lack of contribution of women in the development of technology in general and computer science related technologies. So that's one of the first things that we show the, the richness and the heterogeneity and the long, long history of women developing those technologies at the forefront and regaining this history that has not been written and documented. So that's the first uh, dimension we work very hard. And the second dimension is that the uh, digital security and privacy is for experts, because this is not true. As we say, and that other uh, participants are now exposed, like, uh, we are all the time developing security and safety you know, dimensions in our real uh, physical life. And we also do it in our ways in the digital environment. So we try to break this idea that these kind of tools or methodologies are for experts because in a way we are all our own experts of our, our own relation with technologies. So yeah, that's our way of creating you know, empowerment and autonomy and agency of the women we work with. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, I think a myth for us is um, that women aren't already um, making a lot of safety decisions on a daily basis, um, that they aren't aware of how dangerous the situation is, and um, that they that they um, that they are victims. Um, I think that we uh, we need to focus on their resiliency, their strength. Um, and provide them with the tools through technology, as I agree with everyone here, women um, do want and can access technology. It may not always be from their home, it may be the workplace, it may be a community center, it may be a healthcare clinic, um, but they, they want more information about keeping themselves safe and their children safe and, um, and, and how to access available resources. And so that's what we're trying to do is help them um, with their decisions that that they're um, working so hard on to be safe and help their family be safe. This this is Anne. I just wanted to add in. I think it's ironic that um, culturally we seem to think that um, men hold the keys to technology, and it's also our cultures that reinforce that um, that violent status of control and power over women. Um, we seem to try and cover up all the great founders that brought around technologies that were women. I mean, the first ENIAC um, computers, mathematician, were all women. I was really privileged to meet one of them, Jean Bartlett, before she died. And I think we as women and men need to raise the profile, you know, keep, we tend to like, oh, there's Steve Jobs, you know, there's Bill Gates, but why aren't we talking more about the women who were so influential in creating this space? Um, it's, it's okay if we live our lives differently, but I think we still need to bring them to the forefront too. Um, so this is very interesting what you're, what you're saying here. And I feel like most of your project are mostly helping women use tech as a user or a consumer. Do you um, do you also help women create on the internet and be an actual uh, create with with tech and actually be part of the development of tech? So I'm going to jump in there because that's my job. I mean, I'm, that's I'm a professor of emergent media, and uh, my students are both men and women. Um, and we, I've been teaching in this field for probably 20 years. So definitely teaching both genders how to use uh, technology. And of course, I really think it's important as an educator that we 
teach them um, some of the things that we're talking about here, how to use technology in an appropriate manner and a, a conscious manner. Um, what I'm really proud of here is that Breakaway was created by over 120 students. Um, we have another program out here for college students called Make a Change, and that was also created by our male and female students. And uh, when we partner, we like to incorporate the community. So if we um, are um, able to partner with grassroots soccer, one of the things that the coaches, the young coaches there, are excited about is we would um, use, we would work with them to incorporate their narrative into the narrative, um, which is a powerful place for youth is when they are creating the technology. Right. Um, I would like to jump also on this question, if it's possible, with Dania. So in our institutes, what we try is like to take away the consumerist and user approach that maybe women had with technologies before arriving there. And what we can see is that the many are like getting a new development levels, you know, where they begin to get every time more engaged in developing the technological infrastructure they need, and how they can maintain and how they can contribute in developing them, like liberating and appropriating technologies to their own context, no? For instance, we could see like the governance of women that are getting to our first general energy institutes, they launched like this international uh, call that was called Feminist Hackathon, FEMAC, that was composed by like, 40 activities that took place in very typical countries, but the really nice thing is that the main color design of the website and the centralized mode was hosted in a feminist server that they were self-managing themselves. So what we could see is that we are not so much in a user and consumerist approach, but every time more engaged and eager in, in developing the technologies that need and maintaining them. So yeah, I would say that that's what we try to have, you know, like women able to develop their own technologies and that those technologies are liberating ones. No? Um, from our side, I would also like to jump in because, um, well, it's one of the strongest components of our publication project is storytelling. And that's exactly why Tech Back the Tech uh, decided to partner with us, with Luchadoras and La Sandia Digital, because we are a collective of women media producers that distribute their, their stories mainly through the web. And I'm tying this, this response to one of your first questions regarding prevention, because we women are consuming on the web stories that no, no longer represent us. They mm -hmm. still have associate us with reproductive roles, uh, to motherhood, or to other traditional roles that they no longer speak to us and speak about us. So we want actually to have um, technology work for us to speak about ourselves in first person and with inspiring stories because we know a lot of women doing incredible things in all realms of action whose stories remain out of the web. So um, how can we stop not only consuming those stories that or those contents that don't represent us but actually shaping the web and shaping the contents that we can reflect our realities and our expectations and that is through technologies and that's um well that's the way what we want to to advance in this and also something else i want to to add we're proposing to do this through a series of workshops which are long-term uh, workshops for storytelling because we are aware that not only mastering um, the, 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 the camera, let's say, you can actually tell a story because you don't tell a story through a device, but you tell a story through a vision. So the technology is just an enabler of the vision of a, that, that woman has about other women's or their own stories. So our workshops not only are about mastering a device but being a, a helping women or facilitating women to have uh, their own vision and their own voice out there so it's a, a more complex uh, um, a long-term process of empowerment that is helped through technologies but it's not only centered on mastering a technology but uh, but actually um yeah um 
of, of empowerment of women and finding their own uh, true voices. Great. Um, and how can can people from the outside, either uh, ICT professionals or uh, people working online, male, women, anyone really help this fight against against um, well uh, violence against women, but also your very specific project. How can people help? Um, for for our for my plan, um, one of the things we uh, it's it's already accessible. It's free for download through joinonelove. Um, Dot com um, through uh, Android and through um, iPhone and we'd love people to use it download it we'd love people to share it with um, friends and family that they're concerned about um, as a resource um, we'd like advocates in the community who work with survivors or with men um, to have them share it with their um, clients or their their families members um, so it's really a dissemination of the tool. And then we welcome feedback. We welcome uh, how it can be proved, improved, additional resources that women are, would like. And, um, and so I think it's, I think it's about um, using it and sharing it and, and, and contacting us with what improvements people would like. Yeah, and this is Anne. I'd like to, um, you know, parallel that um, Breakaway is free online and it comes with a um, complete curriculum guide for incorporating into different kinds of youth camps or classes. Um, so that that's, we'd like people to use it. Um, and also I think I want to um, just put in that it really needs, uh, I, I believe technology amplifies. And so, if it's in the right hands, we can amplify good. So one of our strongest um, strongest things supporting the projects is individuals. You know, whether it's individual donors that have helped us um, raise funds to, to run the camps or whether it's individuals sharing the word and um, highlighting the issue. Um, we have a lot of power as individual people. So. Um, that's what I'd say really is important for Breakaway and for the issue. From our point of view, um, a key thing is joining the conversation. Um, daring to read the non-typical stories that you usually read online, daring to expand your your yeah, the, the contents you read, your approach to join the conversation by opening up uh, experiences you have had as a, as a woman, um, sharing content and yeah, making, making it, making a life. Uh, you, you can respond and amplify the, the rich women's stories by um, listening to them and sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in our case, I just want to refer back to a point, uh, point that Alex made earlier, which is the use of certain technologies that we're encouraging women to sort of innovate in their use of certain platforms, certain technologies to create safe spaces. So for us, it's really important to focus on certain platforms that might support that. really important that. to focus and on certain platforms that might or that sort of, sort of uh, uh, products and input towards, towards certain, certain platforms may shift certain ICT businesses to move further into how they can develop and improve their platforms to create safer spaces. What type of platforms are you talking about? Like we saw that, that uh, unfortunately, many social media that are commercially oriented, no? social media platforms commercially oriented, there's been a lot of violence, no? and this is also because they didn't embed it 
some boundaries and principles, you know, and interaction with the communities of people that were being harassed or uh, minorities, no? And there's also a lot of uh, alternatives that are not commercial oriented, that are more based on privacy protection and not selling data and not enabling, you know, like a business around the profiling and the tracking of the persons or the amount of clicks that is done in the platform, which attracts a lot of trolling and haters, no? So there's a lot of small, you know, smaller scale and alternatives that can be also installed in your own servers and a lot of things. We won't go now in the details of, of these things, but this galaxy exists. So yeah, just uh, wanted to call your attention on, on those alternatives. Great. Do we have any questions from the different people following the conversation? You can type the question on the on the um, on the thread if you want, which is on your right hand side. And while we wait for uh, some questions, uh, maybe I have uh, maybe there are some questions, uh, um, ladies, that you wish people ask you but never do, and that would you would like to um, to answer today. Anne, Alex, anything you'd like to say to add while we wait for questions? Yeah, I, I mean, I think people, I wish people would, uh, we need to look at technology as a part, an integrated part of our lives and not a separate issue. Um, technology has a real cool factor right now and it, 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 it can be addictive. So how do we balance that? How do we bring what happens in the tech, what happens in the web, what happens in that virtual world, back and forth to life. And I think that's a really important question that needs to be addressed in order for us to have um, real impact on issues. Um, also see our behavior. I mean, one of the things, you know, one of the speakers we're talking about is harassment online. I mean, the, the game industry is, has, been in the news quite a bit lately because of harassment of, of researchers and female designers. And um, so when that crosses into the physical, which it has done, what's the implications? And how do we, as a culture, how do we um, bring that together, that question together? Um. In our work, I think that, 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 that the overall question that, that we are expecting from, from the tech blogs is how, how, how can, I can I truly, truly you know, increase, increase the privacy you know, and settings and the security, security features of the technology of the you know? Because, because if they would, would get very deep in the design, design and in the development and from the thing, starting, there would be, there would be much, much less problems, problems up. coming up. Great. We do have one question from uh, Ehab, which is how, how do you do regions where pressure is so I work in where and women who live in rural areas where they really have internet connectivity. Focus, focus on, on all forms of technology, technology, not just focus on the internet. So a lot of women may be using mobile cell phones. And so we use, we have them sort of look for safety and security using the tools that they're already using. Uh, so it could be anything from analog to digital uh, technology. And so it's basically uh, looking, looking at, at what, what understanding, understanding what, what tools, tools they're, they're using, using and how they how innovate things. and reuse that those tools to provide them security provide themselves with some security. And we also help them to assess what are the possibilities that exist to increase the connectivity or the kind of technological infrastructure they are looking for. So, you know, like how they can set up a mesh network or how they can set up, you know, like mobile connectivity and these kind of things. Of course, we don't do all the training around this, but what we provide, you know, is like the questions and the resources and the key people and mentors that can help them to figure out these kind of things, no? Mm -hmm. 
Great. Anybody else would like to jump on this question? Oh, well, I will. Um, I think that's what's wonderful about um, the Womanity Award and the replica replication ability um, that it provides. Um, one of the things that we're excited about working with Grassroots Soccer is um, it's really a community um, program with a lot of reach. And that um, having the um, Violence Against Women and Girls curriculum embedded in their curriculum, even that alone makes a huge difference in the reach. And um, working with children, um, you know, in setting kind of values, you know, and, and, and steps in identifying what's an abusive relationship and what isn't, and how do you act, how do you take on a bully, right, or, or not, you know. For children to know those, for a community to learn those, I think that's really valuable. Uh, well, from my side, I think um, we also need to think about technologies in a, in a wider way because, for example, radio, it's a technology. And in Mexico, particularly in rural areas, radio is, is the strongest uh, technology that has a lot of presence and it's a main means of communication so um well they like the tech it's a, it's a it's a campaign that allows for um local adaptation and has done so in more than 30 countries so for us here when in the replication plan we're envisioning for the humanity award is um going through going to those areas too and see what is the most meaningful technology that's being used on the place and make people and communities think around that technology how they can actually also shape the technology own the technology and do their own strategy through that technology so yeah um, also we have a lot of penetration of mobile mobile technologies but we, I, I think mainly when we talk about technology, we forget about other technologies that are around there and are very much used by, by communities still. Um, for, for us, um, working in areas where there's conflict, post-conflict, well, we often partner with humanitarian organizations. Um, and these organizations often have internet access so I think partnerships are key to helping women who are in very, uh, very challenging settings um, to access resources. So we work to partner with uh, both local non-governmental organizations, government, international NGOs, and the government to expand access. All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for participating and listening to this conversation. The Womanity Award winners will be announced at the uh, International We, Fair Chef, we Share Fest uh, in Paris, uh, which is on May 9th at uh, So we are uh, hoping to see. Good luck, everybody. Great. Uh, have a good day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The chat is still available. Thank you. 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 Thank you.